This here encapsulates perfectly why I love being on the road. Oh my gosh. Get a load of this place. It is unfreaking believable. That's what happens when you just slow down a bit, get off the beaten path. We're in the midst of an epic 12,000k road trip up the West Australian coast. And now, we're about to dive into unexplored country. Seeing the stunning natural beauty of the Kennedy Ranges, this has rendered me speechless. And some of the best beaches you can find anywhere on earth. Have a look at this place. This is the Ningaloo Coast, Western Australia. We've got an entire beach to ourselves, beautiful campsite. And I checked out something I've never seen before that absolutely blew my mind. Strap yourselves in, because this one is an absolute cracker. This is a side of Australia like we've never shown you before. This is Off Grid. With Steep Point ticked off, it's time to point the Forbies back towards red dirt country and another hidden gem of this amazing state. Well, I gotta say, I'm really starting to settle into this now. It's been a couple of weeks on the road, living out of the van, free camps, and touching as little bitumen as possible. Big plans for this trip, obviously, Steep Point. We've come out of there. We're gonna go back inland for a bit now to a place that is utterly gorgeous, Kennedy Ranges. Camp out there for a couple of nights, then from there we're going to blast back towards the coast to a really special spot that I think everyone in Australia, if not the world, has heard about. The Ningaloo Coast. Bit of fishing, fire on the beach, sunset over the ocean, couple of brewskies snorkeling over the reef. Does it get any better? Joining me for the adventure are my good mates Steph and Harley. Now, these legends have packed up their lives to tour Oz full time and they're joining me for the adventure in their trusty Colorado. The Kennedy Ranges are hidden away out the back of the upper Gascoigne region, and we've got a long drive through the back roads ahead of us to get there. Something about station country out here in the Midwest of WA that I'm just utterly drawn to, it is barren and harsh. And this is a beautiful time of year out here. Middle of summer, you know, you're talking 45, 50 degrees out here. And the history that dates back, people bringing cattle into these areas and making a living out of it, as harsh as it might be. Just something about station country that just draws me in. I'm, I'm addicted to it. I love camping on station country. I love driving through it. It's just a beautiful part of the world. I've always said that if you want to escape the crowds, station country is the way to go. And we've barely seen another vehicle today. But let me tell you, what's up ahead is absolutely world class. Well, you can't miss that, can you? Kennedy Ranges. Stretches for approximately 150 kilometers. It's all made of sandstone. It's what's called a mesa. That's the technical geological term for it. But basically, it's got a very flat top and it all gets weathered underneath. It really is one of the more impressive geological structures out this way. If you ever come out here, trust me when I say, you got to stop and see the Kennedy Rangers. We're going to go for a bit of a hike up in there and check them out a bit more fully. But the drive in, look at that! The Rangers look pretty stunning from afar, but up close it gets even better. And there's a stack of hikes that you can do that get right up and into the Rangers, where you can see up close the effects of natural forces that are hard to comprehend. Well, I mentioned before that the Kennedy Rangers run for approximately 150 k's, big long straight line. It acted as a natural border between a couple of different Aboriginal tribes. But of course, during times of plenty, they'd all come together and they'd sort of trade bits and pieces and, you know, ceremonies, etc., etc. But there was a couple of factors that attracted them to this area. First and foremost, uh, there's a lot of runoff out of these hills and you're seeing it through here. There's even water still in the puddles down through some of these places down through here. So obviously the water itself, life-giving, but it also attracts game in here. So you get wallabies, kangaroos, lizards, a whole lot coming in here. So hunting would have been fantastic here. Second thing about this place is the geology of it. It comprises some of this stuff here. Unremarkable to look at, although sometimes you find some really nice specimens through here. What's important about it, it's called chert. What's important about it is that it's got a high silica content. So when you knock two of them together, just like that, <laughs> bits snap off and they have an extremely sharp edge. Now, if you're way more crafty than me, you can make some amazing stone tools out of this stuff here. So of course, this would have been super important as well. Tells a tale, doesn't it?
just found this big pool of water down here and as you can see it only gets, gee whiz, it wouldn't even hardly get the midday sun even in summer. So I reckon this pool of water down here would probably stay fairly well hydrated all year round if you dug a bit of dirt out and burrowed down to the edge. You can see down through here where kangaroos have come down for a bit of a drink so it would have been a super important source of water. Now it's places like this that modern day scientists have got into and they've actually dated some of the old tools and bits and pieces that have been left behind by uh, the indigenous cultures around here for a whopping 20,000 years. Let me put that in perspective. We've been here for 200, us dumb white blokes. Indigenous cultures have not only lived but flourished out here for 20,000 years before we even got here. Oh, the poor explorers, they had it hard coming through here on horseback. Had it hard? There were cultures flourishing out here for 20,000 years. It blows my mind. Now, speaking of mind blowing, just up the way, we've stumbled across something totally unexpected. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is unbelievable. <gasps> How incredible is it? That is so sick. This place is known as Honeycomb Gorge, and it's been carved out by millions of years of wind and water erosion from a seasonal waterfall above the cliff face. It's rare that you'll find me somewhat speechless, but this has rendered me speechless. Unbelievable. This is all time. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. So cool! This whole place is unreal. This here encapsulates perfectly why I love being on the road, just travelling around and having a look at what you find. I didn't know this existed. I didn't, I, I didn't know what was here. Get a load of this place. It is unfreaking believable. That's what happens when you just slow down a bit, get off the beaten path, you know, get away from the super touristy areas. There's a word for it serendipity. Look it up. Kennedy Ranges, Western Australia. Where the bloody hell are you? Well, if you ain't been to the Kennedy Ranges, put it on your bucket list. I now want to get back and see that in the wet. Can you imagine standing underneath Honeycomb Gorge with a waterfall pouring back down there? Oh my goodness. Let's get going. The best thing about being out here is finding free camps. And I've heard of a cracking spot right up ahead on the banks of the Lions River. It's getting toward that time of day. Sooner into camp, the sooner the fire's lit and the beer's gonna be cracked. Nothing in the world comes close to the feeling of rolling up to a free camp that you've just discovered. And this one here looks like it'll do just nicely. How good's this? Where are you? Where are you right now? I'm pulling into camp and I'm loving it. <laughs> Now, of course, on this journey, we've got a couple of Maverick hybrid off-road vans in tow. You know what? Setting up these things is an absolute breeze. It's a good idea to always travel with the old impact wrench, just for minor bits and pieces you might have to fix on your vehicle. But when you've got a caravan, I'll show you a bit of a tip. All right, first and foremost, all camper trailers, caravans, they come with these stabiliser legs. Of course, they're there just to make sure that your camper or your caravan it's perfectly stable, especially if it's a lightweight one. But what you can also use these for, I'll just put this one down for you and give you a look. Of course, that's now nice and stable, but what you can do, because this is an impact wrench, it means it's got the torque to enable me to raise this up ever so slightly so I can make it level. I'll just go and do the back one and we'll check on the bubble. It should be good. Split second, she's nice and level. If you've ever tried to do this with the tool that comes with it, You'll know it takes you about 900 turns just to get it to the ground, and then you've got to put your whole body weight on it to try and level it. Carry an impact wrench with you. It takes five seconds to do a 10 minute job. Hybrid life does come with a few perks, and Stefan Hales have really made the most of it. Soon enough, camp is set up, and it's time to enjoy a cold bevy and a western sunset. I gotta tell you, I was a little bit skeptical about this whole caravanning thing. Didn't know if I'd take to it, but how about this? Does a fish like water? I love this. It takes me maybe 
three minutes to get the van set up, kitchen out, pop the roof, get the back out. I'm having a beer within the five minutes that I get into camp. And am I comfortable? Shower and toilet, king size bed, 200 amps of lithium, all the lights. I've got an inverter, heaps of storage. I'm frothing on this, it is so good. All right, let's go cut some wood. Now, in my excitement to see the Rangers today, I forgot to defrost tonight's dinner. But fortunately, the guys are stepping up to the plate with a last minute save, and they seem to already have learned to cook in the four wheel drive 24 seven way. So team, tonight we are doing a mystery meat Sivlaki surprise number. Um, usually we do this with like a bit of beef mince, a bit of pork mince combined together, a treat. But um, because of the last minute stitch up from Graham, we're working with what we've got in the fridge already, out in the bush, supplies are limited. It seems it doesn't matter where you go, there's blokes playing with balls of meat. What's the go here, mate? What are we doing? Well, look, I've seen a couple of dodgy blokes on some four-wheel drive show <laughs> pull a meat out of sausages. Yep. Like it's going out of fashion. No, I thought I'd just come in and class this up because yeah, there cool. is an easier way. Yep. And we just like to keep it a bit neater around here. So yeah, nice, nice, nice. We just like to get a knife. Run Ooh. that straight down the guts of it. That makes my eyes water. It'll make yeah. a grown man twinge, but look, peel after it. that, all you have to do peel is just back. peel back the, the uh, peel back the skin. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need to do that, but we, go on, you, you do you. Yeah. You just pull that off. Yep. And then all of a sudden. Yeah, you got a, you got a meat sausage. It's just pinching off meatballs. Oh yeah. Easy. Just give them a couple of those. That's actually really smart. Look at that. No one would know they're not actually meatballs. All my stuff's prepped. How are your balls going, boys? Glad you asked. I <laughs> uh, haven't been home for a while, but they're doing okay. Yeah. No, 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 we're not. No, no, I, I'm looking after myself. Right out. So, oil's on, pan's hot. Um, we're just going to throw a little bit of chilli in here, just to, just to give this a little. little bit of touch. Because I'm not sure what these sausages are going to be like. But the main key is spread them out, and then we just like to give them a bit of a toss. And we just want to brown them off. For a last minute whip up, this meal is actually looking pretty damn good. You know what? It's a simple but tasty meal that's perfect for camping. Honestly guys, this is amazing. I've not had balls like this in a long time. A little Greek treat on your campfire night. And with that, another amazing day on the road is almost done and dusted. Tomorrow though, things get even better, because coming up, we're inbound to a stretch of coast that is literally second to none. Would you look at this morning? Life really doesn't get much better. We've got another long drive ahead of us today, so camp is soon packed away. All right, it's about ready to take off. Plan for today, of course, is to head out of here, weave our way back down toward the Ningaloo Coast. Now, the Ningaloo Coast, of course, is world famous, renowned for being some of the best beaches in the world. Of course, with that comes the crowds. But folks, last couple of days, We've sort of gotten off the beaten path a bit. We've checked out a paper map and just plotted a route that's come up through the back of the Kennedy Ranges and then sort of weaved our way back towards the coast. We've seen maybe, I don't know, three, four people, one camper way down there, had the whole place to ourselves. If you just get off the grid just that little bit more and just spend a bit of time having a look where people don't go, get out here. It's fantastic. All right. We got a big day ahead of us today, gonna to try and punch out all the way west back to the coast. It's gonna be a fair bit of time on the road. Speaking of roads, there's something just up here before we get started that I've gotta show you. Have a go at this. It's an old cobblestone road in the middle of nowhere, bit of a story behind it. You see, of course, back in the day, everything that came in and out of this region had to be done so by bullet carts or camel trains or anything else on the back of horse and cart. 
Late in the 1920s, of course, motorised vehicles started to step up, and of course, those that drove the motorised vehicles were in competition with those that had the horse and cart. So they tried to make the roads through here as impassable as possible so that they could get their carts through, but the motorised vehicles couldn't. The motorised vehicles put their head together, the drivers that is, and they decided in all the bits that were difficult, like this river crossing down here, they'd make roads so that they could get through quicker. And this cobblestone road is still here today. And I love that you can still see a little bit of history out here. Look at that. It's actually better than the road we're driving on, to be fair. Little tip for you, folks. Of course, everyone's got an in-car UHF. I've been using unit ends now for absolutely ever. I love them to pieces. What I thought they'd come in on this trip, because we're going to have caravans with us, going to be doing a bit of towing, you might be wanting to reverse into a tight area. I wanted to take handheld with me as well. I wanted to be five watt just in case. So what I've done is I've mounted this one here in the cab as well. It's got a little magnetic mount right there. It just goes dunk, magnets on, so easy to get to. You can charge it off a number of different things, USB. I'm using the six socket charger, although I only have to do that every three or four days, so I don't really worry about it too much. But here's a bit of a tip for you. I'm running this one here on our channel, which is 72. We use that one across the board. And then I keep my five watt handheld on the trucking channel, channel 40, so you can hear other people in the area. But it keeps us on 72 so I can, you know, chat to the guys behind any time I want. So yeah, there's a little tip for you. After another big stint, the red dirt is replaced by the white sand of the Ningaloo coast. We're heading to Ningaloo from the more remote southern end. And the road in, well, <laughs> she pretty bumpy. Jeez, these corrugations are a bit how you going. We're only about 12 k's from the coast here. Corrugations along this stretch here, <laughs> they're diabolical. So, two things have happened here. The tires are going down, the pins are out. <laughs> the Ningaloo Coast draws people from around Australia and the world. And for Steph and Harley, this is also their first time to the area. And with that in mind, we're gonna try and cram in as much of the coast as we possibly can. There it is, there it is, the Ningaloo Coast. I've been coming up here for years and years and years. You come over that hill, never fails to impress. One of the most spectacular bits of coastline in Australia, bar none. Over to your left, over to your left, folks. That's us. That's home for the night, how good. James Bay, mate, crack at a little spot. I can almost see a couple of Trevally just swimming around out there. <laughs> Perfect, I reckon they've got our name written all over them. Our camp for the night is a secluded little spot that sees a few less tourists. But with plenty of daylight left, we're going to check out a few other hot spots before we head to camp. Well, this track we're on right now, this is the Ningaloo to Yardi Creek Road. Essentially, it runs from Coral Bay to the south all the way through to Exmouth in the north. Now, along this stretch, it hugs the waterline the whole way. Along this stretch, there must be a couple of dozen campsites, all of them in different little bays, on points. Some have got boat access, some don't. Some are good for deep water fishing. Some have got coral right out the front. <laughs> it's something here for absolutely everyone. Of course, this time of year, it is pretty busy. But even so, I mean, we're outside of school of holidays, big tip, and we haven't seen that many people. Gonna enjoy today, I really am. I'm gonna soak this up. Ningaloo is divided into northern and southern halves by one notable challenge, and that is Yardi Creek. The crossing splits the coast in two and is only accessible by four-wheel drive. Even then, you've really got to time your run. With the creek being largely impassable at high tide, it's fast flowing, salt water, and getting stuck here, well, it's spell disaster. So we have been standing here at this uh, river, this creek crossing for what, the last couple of hours? Nutting out some of life's toughest decisions. Do we cross with the caravans or do we not? We're crossing, baby. We are crossing. <laughs> Wish us luck. All right, we've got told uh, Yardy Creek coming up down here. We've given it a better part of two and a half hours just to let that tide go down. Here she comes. Now, look, I want to say I'm confident about this, but honestly, I'm as unsure as a centipede in a shoe store. First part. 
This is a first for me, both for taking the Y62 through salt and also towing. But this car, my lord, what a weapon. I like that salt water. <laughs> Easy as, Yardy Creek, the old hybrid, big Y62, smashed it. That was so, he walked that in. Straight up there, straight Why up there. Why were we even stressed? I don't know, but uh, it makes me more nervous now that he's through. <laughs> it's but, all right, you've got someone to winch off now. Yeah, you'll exactly be right. Right, hey, let's get the collie and we're into it. Yeah. So I said I was 95% confident about this. That is going downhill at a rapid rate rate of knots as I'm about to drive into the water, but we're gonna give it a go. Nervy, nervy boy. V8 versus a little 2.8. Oh, that water level is right down there, surely. That's a clunk. You know what, that's a good drive from Harley, but also a pretty capable hybrid. They both just sailed through. Out for your big finish. Send it home now. <laughs> Boys! Easy money! <laughs> Give me some knuckles. <laughs> All right, onwards to glory. While this bit of coast offers a whole lot to see and do, there's one thing that makes this place so special. One of the big draw cards to this stretch of coast, of course, is the Ningaloo Reef. It's a fringing reef, meaning it is very close to the shore. What makes it so famous is that word fringing. You don't need a boat to get to the coral reef here. Unlike the Great Barrier Reef, for example, where you need to go right out to sea. With this one, you step off the shore, bang your head on the coral. It is literally in some parts that close to the coast. The spot we've chosen to check out is the Oyster Stacks. It's a big section of reef that butts right up into the shoreline. Of all the sports out there, I reckon snorkeling is one of the ones that doesn't look the most glamorous. Especially if you've got ears the size of mine. They get in the way of your snorkel. Got to go! This place might not look that impressive from above the water, but underneath, it's a fish-filled paradise. Well, without a doubt, probably the premier thing people come to the Ningaloo Coast for is that right there, the Ningaloo Reef. And like I said before, you literally can step off the beach and into the reef. Now, we're here on low tide, it could do with another metre of water out there, but even at low tide, I must have seen half a dozen, a dozen different species of fish out there. I reckon we're gonna come back and give this one another go, because honestly, that is superb out there. Just watch out for the sea cucumbers, they're everywhere. Some big ones too. It's about that time of day where we need to get on to camp. And for that, we're heading back to our little hideaway at Jane's Bay. What makes this spot so special is not the camp itself, but the bit of beach it gives you access to. And for that, we're unhooking the vans and leaving them at camp. <laughs> oh my God! There she is. After all these years, it still blows me away, the colour of the water up here. It's every shade of blue you can imagine. <laughs> yes, it is. It is insane. If you're wondering why the Ningaloo Coast is so famous, check that out. I don't think I've ever seen water this blue, Hulls. Mate, this is as good as it gets. This is unreal. And there's Just... no one in this bay. There's one man fishing. That's it. That's it. Oh, the whole beach to ourselves. Get me in that water. Perfection. Have a look at this place, folks. Unbelievable. Ningaloo Coast, what is there that has to be said about this place in order to describe it? It is paradise on earth. Now, pretty crowded at this time of year, but have a look at this. Two people swimming down there, I know them. As far as I can see, 
In that direction, not a soul. Ningaloo Coast. Get up here and check this place out, folks. It is as good as it looks. Now, someone could send the fish a memo. That'd be good. With the tide heading out, we're able to get onto the beach itself. But you know what? Wherever you choose to park up in this place is pretty damn magical. Soon enough, we've had a few bites. Not exactly what we're after, but it's a start. First catch of the day, we about third cast. So look, this one's going back. Not real good eating, but we're on. This spot is specky. It is unreal. It's glorious. The water is crystal clear. The sand is white. And we've seen dolphins. We there saw was, dolphins. We saw two dolphins. dolphins. Caught a fish, seen dolphins. What more could you want? I've heard that Graham's fishing skills are a little bit overrated, so I thought I'd come down here and just uh, show him how it's done, really. <laughs> like that? Wasn't her best work, that one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not having a great little luck here, but I tell you what, if you counted luck as it actually is, rather than what you expect it to be, luckiest bloke in Australia right now, Ningaloo Coast, all to ourselves. It'll be a beautiful sunset. We've got a cracking camp up behind the sand dunes, and can you hear that? That's a beer with my name on, calling out to me. Graham, come and drink me. The camp here is hidden away behind the dunes, but that just means the chance for a bit more fun without the van in tow. Love this car. I fall in love with it a little more each day. It's like a, it's like a high school sweetheart that you just get closer and closer to as you grow older. Except it uses way more fuel. <laughs> Have a go at this. One of my favorite places on earth. I know I say that a lot, I do. I travel a lot, but this place has my heart. If you've been dreaming, if it's on your bucket list, if you've ever thought, heck, I'd like to get out there, quit your job and just do it. Because I tell you what, this place is worth it. Look at that. Old Casa Cahill is set up and ready for another night. Cracking spot, but here's a good tip for you folks. All of these national park sites that run all up the Ningaloo coast, there's hundreds of sites. Unfortunately, every single one of them you have to pre-book for. You can pre-book up to six months in advance uh, and you have to book the specific site that you're gonna go into. So, my humble opinion, it's not ideal, especially if you don't know where you're going or what you're getting yourself into. Get on some forums, ask around if you're not too sure, but you do have to pre-book. If you just turn up out here, camp host will turn you away because you don't have a site and there's no mobile reception up here so you won't be able to book your site when you get here either so just a word of warning but trust me when I say it is worth it caravan life is glorious but it can be a little bit intimate though in these small spaces but look Oh, you've got it. You may as well use the facilities. How good's hot water on tap? Chef Kayla's on duty tonight, and I'm starting things off with a bit of a spicy entree. These delectable little morsels over here are pork mussels. More to come. <laughs> now look, these little delicacies might not be for the faint-hearted, but I reckon Steph and Harley are in for a treat. Ooh, guys, come here and have a gastronomic treat. This right here is a pig mussel. A pig mussel? A pig mussel, mate. Fill Get us one in. Up, grab one there. Can we talk through it a little? Get a small or... one there, Steph, just in case you're not a big fan. Yeah, that's yes, yours. That's got your name one. written all over it. Smoked mussel mm. wrapped in bacon. Mm. <laughs> you, don't look, you don't look totally stoked with it. I, I'm intrigued. Look, to, I'm curious. To prove it, I'll go in first. Mmm. Mmm. Not bad. No, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Not so sure. That texture is so weird. <laughs> More of Graham's juicy pork muscle for you, mate. Lovely. Fair enough, the first course might have had a few mixed reviews, 
but my next one involves a camp hack that I reckon you'll want to try for yourself next time you're out bush. Whenever I'm trying to do something quick and easy, stir fry comes to mind. Chuck everything in a pot, toss it heaps, serve it up. But what I always find with stir fry, something's not quite cooked or not cooked right. For me, it's ordinarily the meat. I usually stew it, comes out tough and stringy. The vegetables aren't cooked, I don't know. For some reason, I've never been able to cook stir fry very well. Then I come up with this method. This is the deconstructed stir fry. <laughs> Super simple, stick with me. First things first, it's got some marinated pork here that I brought back home. Righto, pork's cooked. I'm gonna take it off. And I've just got myself some extra strong alfoil over here. We're just gonna give it some of that. And we're just gonna let that bad boy rest. Like, oh, that's hot, that's really hot. Now, I travel with a wok. What are you doing if you're not traveling with a wok? What are you using to cook from? But anyway, noodles are on over there. As you can see, I've got this wok, wok hot. Like, really wokin' hot. Now, I'm gonna add peanut oil. Ordinarily, I use olive oil, but for this kind of stuff, you need high heat, so peanut oil is the go. You don't need too much. This is gonna be fast and frenetic. Let's get into it. The trick here, of course, is cooking your veggies and your noodles separate, and combining it again with the meat right as you serve. Oh, that is gourmet, Graham Cahill. And that, my friends, is a deconstructed stir fry. Backwards, I know, but trust me when I say, it is the way to cook stir fry. That's not bad, is it? So good. good. And that right there is a pretty perfect Ningaloo day summed up. Perfect weather, perfect beach next door, and a cracking fire to finish. And tomorrow, <laughs> we just do it all again. It's another perfect day here on the coast. The winter and spring months are perfect times to come up to this part of the world, with mild temperatures and sun aplenty. With the beach right next door, we're going down for another cast before we break camp. And once again, we've got the whole place to ourselves. Unfortunately, a coastal breeze seems to be putting off the fish this morning, but I've got a couple of spots in mind further up the coast that'll hopefully bring the fish, and so it's on to the next destination. As you can imagine, we've done quite a few mods to the big Y62 to get ready for this trip. One thing I didn't really think about too much, I just run it in the D-Max, and so thus I just popped one in here, the throttle controller. Now, the Ultimate 9 throttle controller has got a whole range of different features now. Out here, I've dialed it back a bit because I really don't need a heap of power. I'm just going slow to sort of burbling along. But where it blew my mind was when I put it back up to ultimate, I think I had it on ultimate six, on the highway with the van, when I needed that instant power to overtake, I was actually stuck, believe it or not, behind three other caravans. It was a big, long straight stretch, and I just turned out to get around them, knowing that this thing had the power to do it. But holy heck, she just erupted and whoa! straight past the caravan. So just that instant takeoff, it really makes a massive difference. That wind on the coast may have been the first warning of some wet weather ahead, but it's also blown in some other news. You know, it doesn't matter where you go, how remote or how far, sometimes life just has a way of catching up on you. Unfortunately, Stephen Harley have had a bit of news. They've got to zip home for a couple of days. Hey, unfortunately, we're going to have to cut our Ningaloo for you anyway, Ningaloo adventure a little short for this trip. Yeah, a few things have come up back home that we're gonna quickly fly back down for, but uh, look, the adventure goes on for you. What have you got planned? Look, for me, I think I've got a bit of a plan. What I might do is I might unhitch and go for a bit of a play. I've not actually really put the old girl in low range. I haven't even driven up a hill. I might do that and then look, I've got to catch a bloody fish, come on. Yeah, look, there's been a bit of talk about that so far, and uh, so far you're not living up to expectations. So <laughs> we'll give you the challenge while we're away. If you could catch us something and we can cook it up when we get back, that'd be great. I'm sorry to see Steph and Harley have to leave early, but they'll be back soon enough for the rest of the journey. And after finding myself a place to park the van, it's time to take the Y62 out 
and stretch its legs. Have a look at this. You know, all the years I've been coming up to Exmouth, I've sort of concentrated so heavily on the coastal areas, fishing and surfing, etc., etc., that I've never actually driven up into Cape Range. Cape Range, of course, is this stunning range of hills that runs right through the centre and up the middle of the Exmouth Peninsula. Well, today's the day. There's a four-wheel drive track up here, publicly open four-wheel drive track. You can take from east to west or west to east across the entire thing, which is super cool. This right here, this is called the bird tree. Let me show you why. Whoa, there's one, just fell in. <laughs> Let me show you why it's called the bird tree. There you go. <laughs> now look, I've owned some capable Forbies over the years, but this thing is next level and makes easy work of this rocky terrain. <laughs> well, it did that easily in rock mode, low range. Crawly boy. Loving it. Loving it. Have a go at the view. Have a go at that. Watch the road. Watch the track. And look at the view at the same time. It's tricky business. Wowzers. If you've been watching long enough, you'll know I'm an absolute sucker for a view. Get a load of that. I'm gutted that Stefan Harley didn't get to see this, but a couple of days time, I might just get him to zip up here and have a look for themselves because this is next level. You know, something I noticed all around Australia, we came through town today, teeming with people, heaving. It was like someone had kicked an ant's nest. There were people everywhere. Four wheel drives, stickers and number plates and all the fruit. 10 minutes out of town, nobody. Got the entire range to myself. How does that happen? But to be fair, I'm quite glad that it does because this is spectacular. Now, you'll notice over there, we have got some pretty serious weather coming in. Now, what that's gonna do is cause the barometer to go crazy at the moment. Fish tend to respond to that. Yep, it's time to go fishing. Now, the fishing spot I've got in mind is on the backside of the Exmouth Peninsula and the track leading there from the range is pretty epic. We've seen plenty of red dirt already this trip, but nothing that looks as soft as this. I reckon this might be a bit of a challenge. All right, we've got us a proper sand dune coming up here. I'll we'll have to give this the berries, I reckon. I'll have to give it a million of them. Oh, I see why. I see why. You've got to turn traction control off. <laughs> uh, rookie error. Well, that feels better already. Oh my goodness. So much easier. Animal. Absolute animal. Uh, love it. Love it. Soon enough, I've made it back to the coast this time on the eastern side of the peninsula. Well, big frontal systems just come through. Absolutely bucketed down up on the range. But ain't no such thing as bad weather as weak fishermen, so we're still gonna give it a go out here. Section of flats out here, you can get out onto them. Cast out into there, you may just get yourself a queenie, big trevally maybe. We'll give it a red hot shot. Have a go. How atmospheric is it at the moment? That big front's just swung over the top of here. I don't know about you guys, I love weather events. They just, uh, I think your juice is pumping and let's hope the fish feel it too. Given that these are large tidal flats, getting to the fish is gonna involve a hike out into the bay. Something I reckon my cameraman might not be so stoked on. But come on mate, no risk, no reward. Let's go. Oh, yep, yep. At last, we've got one. Oh, it's a lovely little trevally. What a little beauty. Wow, straight between the cameraman's legs. 
Ningaloo Coast, rain, hail or shine. Get out, wade the flats. Watch out for sharks, there's a few around. Now I'm lucky enough to have a few days up my sleeve while I wait for Steph and Harley to get back here. And that just means a chance to really suck the guts out of the Ningaloo Coast, which has soon returned to picture perfect conditions. What do you reckon folks? Have you been convinced yet to visit? I really hope this place goes on your bucket list because it really is just about as good as it gets on the West Australian coast. Well, the fish ain't playing ball, but the good news is I've got a couple of days up here whilst I wait for Stephen Harley to get back to Exmouth. I'm gonna soak it right up and really enjoy this part of the coastline. However, this is nowhere near where the journey ends. We have still got thousands of kilometers heading north to go yet. You wait till you see what is coming up next. It's almost good enough to drag me away from this. But for now, those fish aren't gonna catch themselves. I'm gonna stick at it. I'll catch you next time on Off Grid. Next time on Off Grid, things take an unexpected turn as we get caught out in a massive spring storm. Look at that water! My goodness. Deep water crossings, mind-blowing gorges, and some incredible camping. Join us as we take on the Pilbara and Karajini. Am I doing it?